it begin? How did the time pass so quickly? What remains? Memories. Of battles, executions, of angry peasants and plotting generals. And of victory. I have memories of the West and, of course, my country, Russia. But can you see a country standing before you? Can you hold it in your arms? Can a country come to you and embrace you? Is this the way it had to be, that in the end I'm alone here, my son lost and my country that I gave my blood to is somewhere out there, something that I cannot see or feel? How did it happen? How did it begin? In the year 1682, I was barely 10 years old. My widowed mother, Natalia, ruled as regent for my slow-thinking half-brother Ivan, heir to the throne. Russia stretched from Poland to China and was ringed by enemies who would keep it landlocked and isolated. Will you never learn? It's time for your lesson. Can't I learn about this instead? Little boys who will be Tsars must learn how to think. I know how to think, Mother. I want to learn how to make things work. Uh-huh. <laughs> come, come. Power in Russia was shared by the church and feuding boyar nobles. While the boyars kept the people hungry, the church kept them humble. Let me help you. I could rid us of the devil myself. I do it every year. Help me with the laundry. Let the master carpenter work a little. be consumed in flame and never enter my home. May the devil be consumed in flame and never enter my home. May the devil be consumed in flame and never enter my home. May the devil be... that restless army formed by Tsar Ivan the Terrible almost a hundred years before. In an effort to seize power for herself, my half-sister Sofia lied to the Streltsy and turned them against my mother and me.
Alexander, be sure you cool them down. What is it? Sofia told Isteltsi that you are going to murder Ivan and put Peter on the throne. They are only minutes away. Why would my own sister say a thing like that? Because she wants to be Tsar. She means to kill both of you. Hide, and don't let anyone know where you are. I don't know who to trust. Where is the Patriarch? Prince Rodanovsky is trying to get him to stop this Delsi. If he can't, General Sheremetyev will defend the palace. <laughs> Everything is going as planned. Where is Ivan? In the East Chapel with Father Theodosius. Hold me. I'm not your wife. I... I'm anxious. This could be the beginning. <laughs> or the end. Or something in between. It usually is. I wish I could be that casual about it. In any case, God will decide. We outnumber them a thousand to one. God has nothing to do with it. You sound like Peter. I'm his sister, Vasily. <laughs> Servant Ivan, this day go on. Oh, holy mother of God, God. And what, Father Theodosius? And preserve. Preserve my servant. No, no, not my servant. You, your servant. You keep him hidden here until I or the prince come to get him. No one else. I understand. Where are you going to put him? In the closet. Why do I have to go into the closet? Your sister will tell you. It's dark. You just do what Sofia tells you. You'll hear some shouting, that's all. I don't like it. It's dark. Sofia? Father Theodosius? <laughs> General Shermetyev, where do you want the third company deployed? At the riverbank. Bring them here the moment you are sure the south gate is secure. <laughs> survive with anarchy, Theodosius. You better get 
out there and tell them the truth. That Ivan is still alive. That Natalia does not mean to kill him. I'm speaking for the Council of Boyaz. I doubt you speak for the entire Council. This does. Properly, Neil. You want God to listen to you, don't you? I bet God listens when you're standing up too. Where do you get these ideas? No one knows God's mind. I do. Lord, forgive my son his arrogance and his blasphemy. <gasps>
must continue. The Regent Natalia and her son Peter are hidden. Your orders are to find them and wipe out this stain on the honor of your country. Oh! Children, hear me! Yvonne is alive and in good health. No one wants to kill him. He is here with the Ravna Sophia. Strelzi, lay down your arms. This is your Tsarevich, Ivan. And here is your royal family. United in tranquil harmony. Strelzi, guardsmen, citizens. The regent Natalia, distressed by these events, has resigned. The Council of Boyars has, by acclamation, appointed Tsarevna Sofia as regent. Give me Peter's brother, he's not well. He won't live long. There should be no witnesses to the solution of our dilemma. Our dilemma has already been solved, dearest Natalia. What are you talking about? The problem of succession. When Ivan has attained his majority, will become ruler, I will step down as regent, and if Ivan dies and the council should agree, Peter will succeed him. It's very simple. The only simple thing about it is Ivan. Surely no one in this room believes that Ivan is competent to rule Russia. He will have counselors. Precisely. And there will be you and Sofia. I have to question the quality of your counsel. What gives you the right to assume that we are less devoted to Holy Russia than you are? There is no substance to these accusations and discussions. Surely, Holy Father, you're not so close to God that you're unaware of the lusts of man. The cold fact is that Russia faces rule by our power-hungry regent and her ambitious lover through a sick and feeble Ivan. I refuse to permit it. Oh, you, you, you won't permit it. To speak publicly of our love, you have the soul of a peasant. No one wants to deprive you of the regency. It is fitting that you should hold the throne in trust. But not for one brother alone to the exclusion of the other. Ivan is weak. Peter is strong. Let each make up for the flaws of the other. In that way, we may preserve the balance and the unity of voice that is the Tsar's by divine right. You invoke divinity at your convenience. There is no precedent for two Tsars. Then let us set one. Let them both be crowned as two Tsars, anointed by Holy Church, ready to rule, no matter what happens. No matter what happens. You threatening me? We would merely be providing for a succession in case of emergency, dearest Sofia. You are in no position to dictate to us. Prince Romodanovsky speaks for the majority of the council. General Sheremetyev commands the palace guard. 
most of the stilts here back in the countryside, robbing the people. Stupid as they are, you won't fool them twice. I am proposing a compromise that will keep the peace and consolidate the power of the throne for years to come. Ask the Holy Father if he objects to that purpose. I think that Prince Romodanus, he proposed a statesman-like solution. And I support him. I suggest that we drink to that. What would we do if the old man didn't know on which side his bread was buttered? We would do what we'd have to do. Is it? A stable boy, Alexander Menshikov. Can you take me to him? What's the matter with you? Speak up. Across the river is not a safe place. The Kremlin isn't safe either. You don't know what it's like there, sire. Then it's time I found out. Take me there. This way, sire. Alexander Menchikov. I said, where is Alexander Menchikov? Back in the shed, sire. Alexander Menshikov. I am. You dropped your knife. Thank you for saving my life. I didn't know it was you when I did it. It doesn't matter. I would like to reward you. Very worried. Ride back to the Kremlin with me. Yes. This is my brother Mishka, Sonia Ngarka. Ladies. <laughs> Alexander saved his life. <laughs> Don't tell lies to your father. He's learning from his brother. No, 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 Delilo, Delilo, leave him, leave him. That's the great thing about the Russian people. No matter who wins, they will still be back selling their pies. May I speak about that, sire? You may say anything you want. Most people don't care who rules. They know better than to accept anything from anyone. 
A man only wants a good woman, his vodka, his black bread, and to be sure of his salvation. It ends there. They will change when I'm, sir. It's God's will. Do you believe our fate is governed completely by God, sire? No, not completely. May I ask where I'm being taken, sire? I'm taking you into my service with the rank of friend, far greater than prince or buyer. You may address me as Peter Alexievich. Yes. You are devoted to the Patriarch. And the Holy Church, Your Highness. There's a certain ambitious quality in your devotion which is not totally obscured by your humble behavior. I do not know what you are talking about. What? Excuse me, I don't understand what you mean, Your Highness. You can perhaps be of some service to our holy cause and to me. I should like you to extend your devotion to Peter to gain his trust, his counsel, his confidence. You can find perhaps some other priest to share this responsibility. My dedication to the Patriarch and the Holy Church are my sworn obligation. You can fulfill this obligation by keeping me informed. You'll be well rewarded. In this world, as well as in the next, it's too long. I'll trip. You'll have to pick up your feet, Ivan. It's supposed to be that way. When I'm Tsar, may I have a trained bear? You can have anything you want. Ivan? I don't like this hat. <laughs> you have to wear this hat. Because you're going to get a crow. wanted it? Two Tsars? Two live Tsars. Don't threaten me. How can I threaten you? You are the regent. Your son will bring you back. God's will be done.
Then one day, in 1692, Islamic Tartars, descendants of the old Mongol conquerors and vassals of the Turkish Sultan, strapped on their bows, arrows and scimitars and rode north. The Tartar raiders operate out of the Turkish fortress of Azov. Let the council hear that this proposal has not been approved by myself as leader of the majority, nor by General Sheremetev as commander of the palace guard. Dearest Ramadanovsky, the sovereign has absolute powers on questions of national security. Proceed, Sukhoruko. At the request of the regent, Prince Galitsyn has developed a plan to destroy them and occupy Azov. I will not conceal from you. My proposal calls for a fully equipped army of some 100,000 peasant soldiers to be raised at considerable cost to the treasury. All rise for Tsar Peter Alexeyevich. Your Highness. Off, I will follow you. I propose assembling two separate armies on the east and west banks of the Don River, here at Voronezh and here at Kursk. The Voronezh army would attack Azov from the east, the Kursk army would cross the Don and attack from the west. How large is the garrison at Azov? Sire, we are awaiting news from our agent. It's good that we catch our bear before we skin it. 
most royal and most dear brother, since this is one of the few times that you have deigned to grace us with your presence since you attained your majority, perhaps you would be kind enough to let Prince Galitzin finish? Oh, sorry. I thought he had finished. May I ask what General Sheremetyev thinks of all this? I am against it. There is no way a hundred thousand inadequately trained Russian peasants can take a Turkish city fortified since 1475 from hardened warriors. Not to speak of the Tatars who stand between us and Azov. Blessings of the merciful Queen and Virgin Mary bring you the most glorious victories. Yes, all those in favor? Aye. Tend to favor us with more frequent visits to the council? Not as frequent as I would like. I'm moving out of the Kremlin. <laughs> we are moving to the Wooden Palace in prayer of Rozhensky. No Tsar has ever resided outside of the capital. It raises a problem of security. The foreign colony is just down the river. I don't think it is the foreigners who are a danger to the throne. I don't like the Kremlin either. Why not, Ivan? It's too dark, and it stinks. <laughs> My very thoughts. Come on. <laughs> I don't understand you, Peter Alexeyevich. You could have stopped it. Nobody was that convinced. I don't want it stopped. If Golitsyn can end the Turkish blackmail and defeat them, I would be all for him. A Golitsyn triumphant with a victorious army would be in a position to seize the throne for Sofia. If it will secure the Ukraine and save Russian lives, so be it. I cannot believe you look forward to the Empress, Sofia. But I would accept it. How would you fight the battle? My teachers taught me that the Greeks fought many battles at sea. Perhaps... water. In what ships? You can't build ships the way draft peasants. Time will tell. I have to repeat what I've said before. The wooden palace cannot be defended. It can easily be burnt to the ground. It's better than being attacked in the Kremlin in the middle of the night, with no escape. My sister had the same plan when I was a boy. At the Wooden Palace, I want two personal regiments. They are to be trained by the best instructors you have and supplied with the latest weapons. And I want peasant boys, not only the sons of boyars. Let Sophia think they are play soldiers, like the ones I had as a child. <laughs> Will you take command? When I deserve it, I'll be a foot soldier. I want Alexander Menshikov as my orderly. Foot soldiers don't have orderlies. This one will. <laughs> and please assign his younger brother Mishka to the other regiment. The family can use the money. The Menshikovs are going to be the richest family in Moscow. Wealth is the only thing that will cure the people of stealing. That's a rather perverse observation, Peter Alexeyevich. Isn't it? But true, nevertheless. Rich men don't steal. Yes, they've already stolen everything. <laughs> <laughs> except after a long time. Nikita, you restored it beautifully. 
Thank you, sire. Where did it come from? They say it was a gift to my grandfather. From Holland. Saw so Michael sail? No, he mostly prayed. He wasn't interested in sailing. <laughs> Let's get it into the water. Are you going to sail it? I mean, do you know how to do it? No, but I intend to learn.
<laughs> Do you have a tailor here who could make me a coat like this? I'm sure you would be delighted. Uh, this is whiskey, sire, from Scotland, my homeland. You may address me by name, General, as my friends do. Call me Peter Alexeyevich. I am honored, Peter Alexeyevich. Hmm. <sighs> like uh, a little water in it, perhaps? We have vodka if you prefer it. No, I like it. What else do you drink? Well, oh, gracious me, uh. Dutch gin, uh, brandy, of course, and, uh, oh, uh, rum sometimes from the colonies. Rum. Pour some for me. Well, rum? All of it. Um, <laughs> Maria, there uh, uh, more glasses, please, uh, half a dozen at least. What is this? Oh, uh, this is a sextant, sire. Its purpose is to enable a seaman to find his position at sea anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world? Mm -hmm. It isn't really very complicated. Show me. Now? After we drink, if you don't mind. I would recommend before. <laughs> Whiskey. I like the whiskey coming from Scotland. What is it about? Isaac Newton, Principia, Principle. It presents a single mathematical law which accounts for the fixed paths of the planets in the heavens, the rhythm of the tides on the earth. Without it, we would simply fly off. Nowhere. <laughs> What's the principle called? Gravitation. This gentleman's idea. Oh, yes. I will have it translated. Is he alive? Oh, very much alive. Uh, but living in London. What's your opinion of the proposed Azov campaign against the Turks? Well, in my view, sir, both strategically and tactically unsound. I'm forming two regiments of my own to be quartered outside the Kremlin. Will you undertake to train them? I'm flattered to be asked. If it can be arranged? It can. Then I'll give you the best soldiers in Europe. I expect to need them. Well, the evening's drawing in, sir. Never find your way home in the dark. I leave the boat here. I still want the lesson on the sextant. Not to mention the sail. And don't forget... your tailor. <laughs> the object of this particular exercise is to sharpen your individual skills in battle, both offensive and defensive. The Green Company will attack the fortification defended by the Blue Company 
Remember what you've been taught, gentlemen, and made a better side win. that the world would come to an end and man come to judgment before the death of his last disciple. Correct? Correct, sire. The last disciple has been dead for 17 centuries. Why hasn't the world ended? Mm, God, like a czar, might change his mind. Very good, father. Very resourceful. Hmm. Must you still indulge in those wild games? Holy Father, I am here at your mother's request. It has to do with the succession. The Tsar is expected to marry and produce a male heir. I have other things on my mind, Mother. Nothing is more urgent. Your sister is forcing your brother to marry. It would be unwise for him to father a child. The succession depends on you. The rebellion of the Streltsy should have convinced you of the brevity of life. Oh, I'm busy trying to prolong my life. A male heir will hasten the day when you rule Russia in fact as well as name. Your marriage will make it more difficult for Sophia to delay the transfer of power. Hmm. All right. Find someone, Mother. I have to go. Marriage, Peter Alexeyevich. It's a Christian duty. A sacrament, not to be taken lightly. I agree. Since I must marry, so be it. I know my mother will find the right bride. A virgin from a noble line, rich with sons. Set the date. Your son, madam, has a wildness and a coarseness unbecoming in a monarch chosen by God himself. He doesn't even grow the beard that God provided us a treasure for all men. Are you suggesting that God doesn't know what he's doing? Madam, it appears that your son's ways are not without precedent in the family. Father, I'm honored. Who invited you? General Gordon. You're coming as well. Mm. It seems Tolstoy knows them all. I've never met anyone from the foreign colony. What are they like? No beards. They dress in the most marvelous practical fashion and the women wait till you see the women they're not shy and covered up like the russian women no and each better looking than the next <laughs> it's a good thing that i didn't find you after your sail down the river yes i'm so glad you didn't find me we are in for the time of our lives how do i look Nick 
Nicholas Whitson, sire. Mean Herr Whitson owes the largest shipyard in Holland. You know Colonel Ivani Chayev, Deputy Commander of the Strozzi. Mr. Whitson, Count Tolstoy, General Gordon, this is Lieutenant Alexander Menshikov. Little salad, sire. Oh. Uh, do you have some of this whiskey? Yes, sire. <laughs> the scriptures well sire it's the one thing we are taught in russia are they drilled into you in england into protestants i believe sire but i am a roman catholic i've never been encouraged to read the bible <laughs> how was it you came to russia i fled my country 35 years ago i fought through poland and sweden i'm a professional mercenary gentlemen <laughs> what do you think of us Favor me by your frankness. You yourself have said it, sire. It's no discovery on my part. Your people, isolated, fearful, uneducated. Ignorant. You cannot get to know the world without contact with other nations. And how do Dutchmen have this contact? Trade. Take goods for our goods. They come to us to buy and sell. We go to them. This trade is conducted largely by sea. Yeah, yeah. We have the largest merchant fleet in the world. You're landlocked. Only one port, Archangel, and that is frozen up most of the year and remote from Russia's heart. Education follows trade. And trade must have a merchant fleet. Then a navy must exist to protect that fleet. Precisely. But you cannot have either without ports. Ports are the key. You know of our interests in the south. Yeah, yeah. It has off. Do you expect success? Forgive me, sire. But without education, your peasants will remain poor serfs. And your rich landowners dependent on them. If Russia does not learn how to be strong, the land will be devoured by your foes. Your country will stagnate and cease to exist. Forgive me, gentlemen. This evening I am master of ceremonies. I'm Lieutenant Alexander Menshikov. Of Lund of Vienna. I'm a physician attached to the Austrian embassy. This is my daughter Daria. I'm delighted. <laughs> Have you been long with the Tsar? Since childhood. So, which of the noble families is yours? The Menshikovs are very highly placed. We live in the center of one of the most important pigsties on the Moscow River. Well, <gasps> what's a pigsty? Pigsty? Yes. <laughs> what's so funny? No. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Raya and the Nun. Thank you. 
nice of you. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm afraid that's all there is. It's remarkable. I should like to take it apart. To rouse your scientific curiosity. Yes. We have nothing like that. What a pity. You can have it. But it's part of your collection.
My mother devoted her time to finding a proper wife for me, one whose family had borne predominantly male offspring. She finally ordered the doctors to examine one Eftokia Lupukin for virginity and childbearing ability. Well, have you reached a judgment? She seems thin, but the measurements are right, and that's what's important, Your Highness. The size of the pelvis seems adequate, and the angle is normal. I believe she'll carry the Tsar's child well. That wasn't so bad, was it? It's all over now, child. and in all respects satisfactory. Thank you for your kindness to her, Your Highness, and accept my gratitude for your generosity. My steward has informed me that you have asked for only a token dowry. Your family has been loyal for three generations to our family. We could do no less. Thank you. She's still very shy. Come and greet her father. Sire, this is Boyar Lapuri. Sire. Welcome. seen fit to bring me here, sire. May the Lord God and his most pure mother bless you, their servants, Peter. And you have to key it. May you ever serve his glory and our motherland abiding in love, harmony, and prosperity all the days of your life. My daughter, this is the last time you shall be admonished by the authority of your father, beneath whose rule you have lived. You are free of me, but remember, you have not so much escaped from my sway as passed beneath that of another. Should you not behave as you ought toward your husband, he in my stead will admonish you with this whip. O oh, most holy father, I have no fear. O oh, most holy father, I have no fear that what do I have no fear that? Sire, you don't fear anything. You believe. Oh yes, thank you. O oh, most holy father, I believe that because of the goodness and obedience of my wife, I will have no need of this whip. No, you may keep it. Thank you. I'm very, very pleased. Lord, keep your sire. <laughs>
Tsaritsa! Tsaritsa! until the dinner's over and they come to get us. Huh? I think we should pray. For what? That your son is born healthy and I don't die having him. <laughs> this certainly is cheerful, Eftokia. The Holy Father says you're not supposed to enjoy it. How would he know? <laughs> Please forgive me. Yes. It's the way I was brought up. <sighs> Please snuff out the candles.
Aren't you going to take off your cross? Why? You have to. The Holy Father says married couples must always do so before the wife sacrifices herself to her husband. Sacrifice?
This young man who has been invaluable to me in this and other intelligence. May I present him to you? This is Dmitry Shafirov. General Gordon. Captain Menshikov. Gentlemen. Are we finish that later? Yes, sir. Pour him a drink. No, please, no. Ha, 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 ha. 
He's invaluable and he doesn't like vodka. <laughs> Speak up. What information do you have? Prince... <coughs> I'm sorry. Prince Golitsyn has been ambushed and badly beaten north of Azov. How many men has he lost? 45,000. I have also learned that your sister intends to, to represent this campaign as a triumph and to bring Golitsyn home as a, as a conquering hero. She is capable of it. Unless she's exposed, this could consolidate her power further. How do you obtain your information? As a Dutch diamond merchant in Amsterdam, as a, as a Pole trading with the Turks, uh, other identities. Put all the details in writing for me. Place him in the foreign office. <clears throat> I have to tell you, Shafirov is a Jew. So was our Lord. <laughs> Gordon is a Roman Catholic. Half the foreign colony is Lutheran. Alexander, I strongly suspect of being a devil worshipper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We thank you for your great and heroic services. Take it. Through the grace of Almighty God, <clears throat> you have conquered our heathen enemy, the pagan Turk, and you return in triumph, like Julius Caesar to Imperial Rome. Accept our heartfelt gratitude and our award. All rise for Tsar Peter Alexeyevich. General Shaklobiti. Two months and four days ago, the army led by Prince Vasily Golitsyn faced an expanse of scorched earth between it and its objective, the Turkish city and fortress of Azov on the River Don. Prince Golitsyn chose to encamp in a narrow valley surrounded by low hills. As water for its fever-ridden soldiers and fodder for its animals ran low, Tartar scouts silently massacred the sentries. Shortly after dawn, the main body of the Tartar forces attacked with total surprise.
100,000 men left Moscow. 55,000 returned without cannon and livestock. Half of those are wounded or ill. 45,000 Russian soldiers died. They're buried in unhallowed ground. Countless heroes have shed their blood for this hour first, the first victory since the reign of my dear father, Tsar Alexis. I will go to the Streltsy and talk with Shakluviti. Don't talk now. party tonight, Captain. I had hoped not. Why the escort? It's not a night to be without escort. May I offer you something to drink? Of course. Shall we toast? The day's events. They've been successful? For the moment. And you are rewarding yourself? I suppose I am. Well, I'm glad to be the prize. You find out how the music box works? I know how it works. Do you? Oh, yes. <laughs>
Sewish. I think you've become a father. <laughs> Sophia's dog. A man will say anything under torture. There was no torture. We offered him a priest and a quick death in exchange for the truth. Sooner or later, Sophia will attack here in force. Yes. And this damn place is totally indefensible. I mean, just look at it. One shot. Agreed. It's time for us to return to the Kremlin. Order Sheremetyev to prepare. Have Shafirov notify Romodanovsky. I want nothing in writing. Can you deliver the foreign officers? I don't know, sir. Try. What can I do? I'm summoning Shaklobiti. I don't understand your purpose. If you're wrong, he'll obey. If he defies me. What about your brother? Oh, Alexander. Poor Ivan has no part in this. You know that. Your sister will find a way to use him. What if she does? Take him by force if necessary. No, Alexander. My brother and I are at peace. I couldn't. If we stay here, Holy Father, You'll have to answer to God for our lives, not only to my son. You say they're in danger from Sophia here, how? Huh? How much more proof do you need? Do you want to see the corpse of my grandson? The attack on the Tsar was the work of an isolated band of extremists. If any were left alive, the regent would be the first to bring them to justice. You slander her if you suggest she had anything to do with it. You must understand that your son is no longer himself. Foreign heretics have seduced him. Satan has taken over his soul. Are you suggesting that my son is mad? No, he is saying the Tsar is mistaken. No one is going to attack this palace. The Tsar's place is in the Kremlin in Moscow, not in the wooden palace in Prebrasensky. I will protect my life. And the life of my son. We are Russia. We are its future. Nothing else is important. Can you give Shankarvi to the Tsar's aura? He'll keep you waiting. How do you know? Ha! Because I'll have to ask Sophia to tell him what to do. I'll wait for you at Father's house. Take care. Yes. If you're not home by dark, I'll wait here for you.
that he's planning to return to the Kremlin to overthrow Sofia and Golitsyn. Thank you. The sides are hardening. Prince Sakharukov is now unequivocally for Sofia. Tell Tsar Peter that I'm with him to the death. Are you prepared to defend the Tsar? Tell Peter Alexeyevich. He commands my body, my spirit, and my blood. Sir, I have orders from the Tsar. Which Tsar? Tsar Peter, sir. Do you know the content? I do, sir. Tsar Peter has interesting ideas about where to place his confidence. Wouldn't you say, Nachayev? Are you in the Tsar's confidence? I know him, sir, but he doesn't confide in me. Perhaps your rank is too high. How many men are under arms at Preobrajenskoy? I do not know, sir. What weapons do they bear? I do not know, sir. How many cannon and mortar are at their disposal? I do not know, sir. For an officer who knows the Tsar's orders, you seem to be somewhat selectively uninformed. If you'll excuse me, General, I'm compelled to say I think this is a mistake. I do not excuse you. This young man may not be in the Tsar's confidence, but his brother Alexander is. You could pay with your head for this. A child, I have defied the Tsar. I'm prepared to accept whatever fate God has. Give the money to me. I am the master in the house. Danilo. I give it to mother so you don't drink it all away. I have more important things to do nowadays. Yes, like talking against the Tsar. He has committed adultery with a heretic. He listens to foreigners. He's not the Tsar, but Satan in the Tsar's body. Is that what the priests tell you? I don't need the priest to tell me. When he left the Kremlin, I knew. <laughs> Holy Jesus, my sons are in the service of the devil. Show them the light before it is too late, and they are damned forever. Yes. 